Hello and welcome in a new video and in this video we are understanding the concept of minimum spanning tree which graph is called minimum spanning tree and how we convert graph into minimum spanning tree okay so to converting graph into a minimum spanning tree first of all we need to understand some key features of minimum spanning tree which tree we can call yes this is a spanning tree okay so first of all we have to understand about the spanning tree okay so first of all we have to understand about a spanning tree okay so what is a spanning tree a spanning tree basically a connected sub graph remember this point a spanning tree is a connected sub graph connected sub graph let's say s let's say s means s is a spanning tree which is a connected a sub graph of a graph of a of a graph let's say a graph having vertex v and edge e is said to be a spanning tree is said to be a spanning tree spanning tree if now these are the condition these uh, to converting a spanning tree into uh, to converting a graph into a spanning tree there are two key points that we have to remember while converting a graph into a tree spanning tree what are these two points the two points are that spanning tree means the tree which we derived from a graph should have all the vertex which have uh, in a graph if let's say in a graph uh, we have uh, 10 edges 10 vertexes in a spanning tree we have 10 vertexes as well means the vertex should be same in a graph or in a sub graph okay so what's the key point that s should contain all vertices all vertices of graph all vertices of graph okay remember this thing it's a connected sub graph it's a connected sub graph means from a one graph let's say we have one graph so from that graph we can write we can drive so many minimum minimum spanning tree okay we can drive so many minimum spanning tree let's say s1 s2 s3 we can drive so many spanning tree from a one particular graph that's why it's called a connected subgraph it's called a connected subgraph okay uh, how much we can find that's also we see this thing but first of all how we can say that this graph okay this is a spanning tree okay so first point is that all the vertexes should be same means if in a graph there is a y f 10 15 and if there is any vertex let's say v the subgraph also contain v vertex okay now second point is which is also very important that in a definition we say it's a connected graph so the edges the vertex should be connected through edge the vertex should be connected through edge okay so how many edge will be there to connect this graph same as no edge should contain means a minimum spanning tree should contain v minus 1 edges v minus 1 edges a spanning tree should contain v minus 1 edges now let's take an example and understand these two key points then when we say that okay this is a spanning tree let's say uh, we have one graph this is a graph which is connected to each other okay let's say vertex a b c and d this is what a graph okay now what how we can drive a spanning tree? how we can form a spanning tree so spanning tree is a connected subgraph which contain all the vertex means in the main graph we have four vertex so in a tree there is also four vertex one two three four so we have to write four vertex okay now the second point says that the s means the spanning tree should contain v minus one edges so how many vertex will there in a graph we have four vertex so how many edge should be there in a 
spanning tree v minus 1 we have we have v value of v is 4 4 vertex minus 1 which is equal to 3 means we have three edges to connect these four vertex now how we can do that let's connect this let's connect this and let's connect this now every vertex is connected with each other yes we can say that let's say e b c and d so if somebody from b wants to go c so yes he can do uh, from b to a a to d and d to c means every vertex is connected every vertex is connected and we have four vertexes there and three with the help of three edges we can successfully drive a, a tree now this tree is called a spanning tree spanning tree this tree is called a spanning tree so i hope it's understandable that which tree we can call a spanning tree which having same vertex as a graph have and one minus the vertex edge should be okay now we can drive uh, what i say that we have one graph we can drive so many spanning tree okay we can drive so many tree so this is a one tree we can also write like this as well okay so here you can see that a b c d is this a spanning tree yes this is also a spanning tree S four vertex in a main graph there are four vertex yes so first condition is satisfied second condition says that i j should be one minus vertex in a main graph so four vertex is there so if we subtract one you have three so in this graph we have three edges and uh, yes we have three edges and every vertex is connected yes every vertex is connected so now we can say that it's also a spanning tree we can say that this is also a spanning tree and uh, so now let's take another example like we have these four vertex so first condition is satisfied the four vertex four vertex is there edge should be edge should be three now what happen if i connect it like this this and this now we can say that this is a spanning tree because here the vertex is four and in a main graph vertex is also four so first condition is satisfied second condition is edge should be one minus vertex so edge should be three and here you can see that edge should be one two and three edge is also three so this is also a spanning tree no the correct answer is this is not a spanning tree so what's the property of a spanning tree in a definition it is written that a connected subgraph in definition okay so in definition what is written that a connected subgraph means every vertex should be connected here you can see that one vertex is not connected it means it's not a spanning tree it is not a spanning tree let's take one more example okay so i hope it is understandable that which uh, how we can form a spanning tree and which tree is basically a spanning tree okay now let's take an example like <coughs> this this is a connected graph okay so now we have to drive um, a spanning tree from this graph so here in this graph vertex is what vertex is 3 and edges edges is what okay so we write okay, so wait a minute edges for the subgraph okay so edges for the subgraph subgraph should be vertex minus 1 so edges will be like 3 minus 1 means we can make a spanning tree with having three vertex and two edge from this graph then we can say that okay this is spanning tree is derived from this uh, particular graph okay so first of all the number of vertex should be same so one two three i'll add three vertex okay edge should be two not more than two not less than two okay and every vertex should be connected then we can say that it's a spanning tree so one vertex is like this and another vertex is like this so we use two vertex to connect all the we use two edges to connect all the vertex so yes we can say that it's a spanning tree we can say that it's a spanning tree okay we can take one more example as well we have three vertex in a main graph yes three vertex is there edge should be two so one is connected to this and another is connected to this so is this a spanning tree yes this is also a spanning tree. this is also a spanning tree. 
and this spanning tree is derived from this graph this spanning tree is derived from this graph so i hope it is clear to you that which graph we can call a spanning tree okay and what is the property of an spanning tree is why i told you these things because now we are now understand the concept which very important concept which is kruskal algorithm and a prism algorithm okay these are the two very important algorithm for exam point of view and for the placement point of view as well okay so now the real thing is start which is kruskal algorithm kruskal algorithm okay so there are two most important spanning tree algorithm first one is kruskal algorithm and the second one is called prism algorithm second one is called prism algorithm okay so these are the two algorithm two most important spanning tree algorithm okay so spanning tree algorithm spanning tree algorithm okay so now and we are understanding about kruskal algorithm first of all and then we understand about prism algorithm okay so what happen in a kruskal algorithm whatever we understand in a spanning tree we are doing the same thing in this algorithm okay so what we are going to do in a kruskal algorithm we are find the minimum path we are find the minimum path to travel from a one vertex to another or travel from a one point to another this is used in a uh, in a road map to determine the roads which having minimum traffic which having maximum traffic uh, in a broad way it is used in that field okay so this algorithm basically help us to determine the best path from one point to another okay so let's take an example we have one graph okay we are going to take a tough example okay so we have one graph like this okay and let's say its name a b c d e and f and let's give it some value like 3 5 4 and we are going to connect it this as well okay 4 2 4 3 4 6 5 6 this point let's say d 6 and 6 okay this is 6 so we have one graph what we have to do is we have to determine the shortest path in this we have to determine the shortest path in this okay so first of all we have we are, we are solving this question with the help of spanning tree okay so for that spanning tree what are the two important things we need vertex so how many vertex is there in this 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 7 1 vertex is there how many vertex is there 7 1 vertex is there okay and how many edge is there in this case how many edge is there in this case means how many edge uh, if we are making a spanning tree from which is derived from this graph if we are making a spanning tree which is derived from this graph so how many edge should be there what i told you to derive an spanning tree edge is vertex minus 1 so edge will be 7 minus 1 which is equal to 6 so if now if we are drawing a perfect path a shortest path with having edge 6 and a vertex 7 okay so first of all we have to write the vertex so 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 we draw the vertex now the main thing is we have to determine the edge we have to determine the edge okay so now what basically this algorithm says of kruskal algorithm what basically it says it says that short the graph with respect to their weight first point is short the graph short the graph with respect to with respect to its weight 
शॉर्ट द ग्राफ विद रेस्पेक्ट टू इट्स वेट मीन्स वेर एवर यू सी द मिनिमम वेट ड्रॉ लाइन ड्रॉ एज देयर कनेक्ट दैट टू पॉइंट फ्रॉम देयर एंड रिमेंबर वन थिंग यू कैन यूज ओनली सिक्स एज टू कनेक्ट ऑल द वर्ड डेसिस दिस इज़ अ वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट पॉइंट दिस इज़ अ वेरी नोटेबल पॉइंट ओके सो वॉट डज दैट मीन वॉट डज दैट फर्स्ट ग्राफ पॉइंट मीन्स दैट हेयर यू कैन सी दैट फ्रॉम ए टू बी एंड ए टू एम विच इज अ शॉर्टेस्ट पाथ सो द शॉर्टेस्ट पाथ इज फ्रॉम ए टू एम विद हैविंग वेट थ्री सो डेफिनेटली यू हैव टू डू सम थिंग विद दिस टू पॉइंट नाउ दिस इज वॉट द सेकेंड पॉइंट सेज वेर एवर यू गेट अ मिनिमम वेट स्टार्ट एडिंग एजेस टू दैट स्टार्ट एडिंग edges to that and make a minimum spanning tree simple way you know make minimum spanning tree from that edge okay so let's do that thing so from a to b and a to f which is the smallest weight definitely a to f have a smallest weight we having three and a to b is a five so connect this point after that now we are connected these two points okay we are connected these two point now remember one thing uh, which is now you cannot do this now you cannot connect this point okay why you cannot connect this point because from a you draw one edge if you connect this point you cannot cover all the edges you cannot cover all the edges because two edges is used in this now you have four edges if you draw four edges to connect if you are try to you know connect the point with having four edges one vertex is always left so you cannot do this thing okay now a to f you connect it now from f you have to select the shortest path okay so from f f to d f to d we have three the value is what okay so its value is 5 okay not 3 the value is 5 and from f to b because we have to connect b as well so what's the value from f to b 4 there is any other option to connect from f to connect this b vertex so the answer is no we have not another option with giving a shortest path because if you connect it from f to d d to c and c to b so it's correct 5 plus 6 11 and 2 13 means it take 13 way to connect from f to b but if you connect directly from f to b if you connect directly from f to b the weight is 4 and the first point says that we have to sort with respect to it weight okay so from f to b we are connected and from d now we have to connect d now from b to d the weight is 6 from c to okay so a b c d from c to d the weight is also 6 from a to d the weight is also 6 the weight which is smaller than these three is from f to d so yes if a smaller weight now you have to make an edge which is 5 now you can see that we use three edges and we connect three vertices four vertex with the help of three edge we connect four vertex okay so here you can see that how we connect this thing we cannot do connect a to b to d because the weight is 6 we cannot we cannot connect c to d because weight is 6 we cannot connect e to d because weight is 6 that's why we are not able to connect these points okay the one option which is left is f to d which gives a minimum weight okay so i hope it is understandable that how we connect these points now the next thing now we have to connect c d and e now if you connect from d to c the weight will be 6 but if you connect b to c the weight will be 2 so which where you have to place the edge from b to c vertex okay because it having the minimum weight what is it weight 2 you cannot connect d to c because it's 6 but from b to c directly if you are connecting then you have a weight we have to select the minimum weight we have to select the minimum weight so i hope it is understandable that why we are connecting these two points after c we have uh, now how many edges left 1 2 3 4 four edges used and two edges is left now 
we have to place two edges very carefully with having minimum weight now if you are connecting d to e the weight is 6 f to e the weight is 6 d to e the weight is 4 so you can do that thing but if you see that c to e if i connect directly the weight is 3 so definitely 3 is less than 4 so we are going to connect these two points okay now the one vertex left from c to d the weight is 4, 4 from e to d the weight is 4 so you can connect from anywhere because weight is same so i connect it from here so the weight is now become 4 now uh, we use all the edge now count the edge how many edges there so 1 2 1 2 3 4 5 6 6 edges used to connect the 7 vertexes so this is what a crucial algorithm is this is what a crucial algorithm is we have to select those vertex we have to connect those vertex with the edge which, gi which gives us a minimum weight which gives us a minimum weight now the answer wh what is the answer now whatever the weight you have you have to write that you have to write the sum of that okay so 3 plus 4 plus 5 plus 2 plus 3 plus 4 so it's like 5 4 uh, 5 5 10 10 18 19 20 21 so the answer is 21 so 21 is the answer of this graph so i hope it is understand that why we understand about minimum spanning tree because that is used in a crucial algorithm okay now what you understand with this graph you form a spanning tree now what you understand we can get a minimum path we can go from a to d with having minimum cost we can go from a to d with having minimum cost okay and what you understand you understand that you can connect any vertex from anywhere means if you see that a b a to f is a shortest path you connect that thing you see b to c is a shortest path you connect that thing as well so what you understand from this thing that we can connect any point any vertex from anywhere there is no sequence like from a to f then we have to drive from f to something somewhere then somewhere to somewhere no we can where we get a minimum weight we connect that vertex okay so this is what happened in a crucial algorithm okay so now we are moving towards the next algorithm which is a prism algorithm which is also similar to this but there is a one difference now let's understand about prism algorithm okay so i hope it is understandable what is a crucial algorithm is okay now now the second algorithm which is a prism algorithm prism algorithm now what prism algorithm say let's see this thing okay so we can take one graph like okay so we have to create one graph so the graph will look like this uh, okay so the graph will look like this now let's say that name like a uh, b okay so okay. now let's say let's give him a name a b c d e f g h and i okay so now what's the weight weight is like a to b 3 6 6 5 3 and uh, 6 5 3 7 8 7 8 10 2 7 and let's say it uh, let's say it 4 and from G to F let's say this 20 ok so this is what a, uh, this is what a 3 a graph now what we have to do is we have to understand about the prism algorithm we have to understand about 
prism algorithm that how this thing work okay let's see this now there is a slightly difference from a quizzical algorithm in a prism algorithm in this algorithm we definitely have to make a spanning tree a spanning tree but the correct but the way we create a spanning tree is different from the quizzical algorithm in a quizzical algorithm we connect anywhere where where we get a minimum weight we connect from that here also where we get a minimum weight we connect but in a sequence if i start from a point point a then we have to follow the path we have to follow the sequence we have to be consecutive means if i go a to b then from b we have to select the new path we cannot select h to i because it's 3 we can select that thing but we cannot do that be because this is a difference between these two algorithm okay so if you are connecting a to b and then h to i then it's a quizzical algorithm but if you connect a to b then b to okay so a to b and b to c c to i is a prism algorithm okay means you have to be there you cannot remove your point from one vertex to another vertex you cannot break the flow okay you cannot break the edge now how we create a spanning tree where we get a minimum weight we do that thing okay everything is same everything is same bus uh the main point is we cannot break the flow okay so these are the vertex how many vertex is there 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 so vertex is 9 how many edge we can take to point to collect all these vertex 9 minus 1 which is 8 means we can use eight vertex to connect this thing because we are drawing a spanning tree and this is a property of a spanning tree okay the prism algorithm says you cannot break the flow okay so now now uh, how we do that thing we have to, we can uh, start from anywhere if you want to start from uh, okay so a b c d e f g h and i if you have to select from i you can do that you start from d you can do that you start from e you can do that you can start from anywhere there is no matter but wherever you start you have to continue the flow you cannot break the edge okay so let's say we start from a okay so now we are starting from a uh, so where we get a minimum weight so from a to b okay so from a to b you can see that the weight is 3 and from a to h the weight is 6 so which side you select definitely you select a to b a to b which is 3 where we get a minimum weight we draw that now you can move from b to somewhere else you cannot move you cannot break the b path and start doing i uh, start connecting c or d or d or i you cannot do that thing okay now we are in b point but you have to remember that we have one way with having if there is a you know if there is a very high weight for connecting a to h let's say a to h there is not if there is a 16 let's say from a to h there is 16 okay so you are going to do that thing definitely not you cannot connect that thing you can go to a to c c to i and i to h so if you if you want to do that thing you can do that but what's the weight 5 plus 2 7 7 and 3 10 but if you connect a to h you will get 6 the weight is minimum here so you can do that thing means you can connect from that thing as well but in the case where when you get a minimum weight okay the, in that case where you get a minimum weight remember this thing okay if you get a same weight you cannot break the edge okay so here the six so you can connect directly there is no matter you can connect it directly you can connect from here as well so but you can not do that because it's create a simple you are using unnecessary edges to connect the vertex which is not happening in a prism algorithm if you are now b point you have to connect from that okay so here you can see that we have six and we have 5 6 and 5 so which path you choose definitely you choose uh, which is a minimum weight means you have to connect 
a b to c now what's the weight weight is pi you can select b b to h but the weight is 6 means weight is greater than the b h h weight is greater than b c h weight okay so we have to connect b to c now c to d the weight is 10 but c to okay so c to d the weight is 10 but c to i the weight is 2 so definitely you choose 2 okay so definitely you connect c to i so okay it's understandable that why we are not choosing the another path because that weight is greater and we cannot break the flow so that's why we go with the flow now we are in i position okay so from d uh, we can connect d from uh, mean now we have three points oh, we have two points means one is connected to h with having weight 3 another is connecting to f with a weight 8 so we have two options you can select only one which is a minimum weight so here you can see that 3 is minimum 3 is less than 8 so definitely you are joining i to h you are joining i to h you are joining i to h okay now you are in a h so here you can see that you can go from h to g h to b h to a but if you go from h to b h to a you are wasting one edge because you cannot connect then all the vertexes because we have a minimum edge and we use four edge if you're connecting this then we have to move from the same edge as well then it's a wrong thing okay, okay. so we cannot connect all the edges it means we are not drawing a minimum spanning tree we are not even draw spanning tree okay so from h we have only one path which is h to g okay so we connected h to g now the weight is 7 from g from g okay so the weight is what from g to f the weight is 20 from g to f the weight is 20 are you going to draw an edge here so what basically i say if you if you simply go back you can go back there is no extra edges used for going back from the same route so if you go back then again go back in i position you can go from i to f with having weight 8 but if you are going from g to f you will having weight 20 so here 20 is there and from i we have only 8 so which is minimum definitely it is minimum so now from g vertex we go from h h to i now we are going on the same path we are we are not using a, any h okay so now we have to connect from i to f why we are connecting from i to f because it gives a minimum result it give a minimum result so now edge weight is what 8 so we connect i to f you cannot connect a g to f because the weight is 20 and we are drawing a minimum spanning tree okay we have we have to select the minimum path okay so now we have two options uh, from f to d or from f to e f to d and f to e so from c we can go there but the weight is 10 from f to d the weight is 7 from f to uh, from f to okay let's say it's 14 uh, you can write it for uh, okay so let's make it for us from f to e you can connect that here you can see that the weight is 7 here you can see that the weight is 4 we have two choice from f to d you can go there from f to c you can go there we have to select both the vertex so we have we get a minimum thing we go there so from f to c we have a weight 4 so we connect that thing okay now we have only one edge left here you can see that 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 we use 7 edge one edge is left now you have two options whether you go from e to d with having edge 3 edge weight is 3 and f to d with having edge weight 7 from f to i i to c where from c to d you can also go there with the edge weight 10 now which edge is minimum definitely edge number e 
means if we connect e to d vertex we are get a minimum weight so we are going to connect these two now this is our eighth edge so i hope it is clear to you that how we use a prism algorithm we move forward but we uh, store the value of backward backward vertex as well in a case like this when we get a very high very high value then we go back and if there is a possibility of a minimum edge then we draw that edge like this here you can see that from i to f we draw one edge because from g to f we have a weight 20 which is very big and from i to f it's only eight so i hope it is clear to you that why i what, what's basically the difference between prism algorithm and a crucial algorithm in a crucial algorithm we can join any vertex where we get a minimum weight we join that vertex in this we start from point one and store the every possibility and we have to not break the edge we are not going to break any edge means for example if we have this thing like this if you go from this vertex to this this okay so okay so if you go from if you if you go from one vertex to this vertex and this to this this and you cannot do that thing you cannot connect these two vertex now because now this is not a prism algorithm prism prism algorithm thing you cannot connect this thing you can go from here to here here to here or here to this vertex this vertex to this vertex you can do that thing but you cannot break the edge you cannot break the vertex flow simple thing okay so this is what a prism algorithm is okay so this is what a prism algorithm is i hope it is clear to you that what is the difference between these two algorithms okay what is the difference between these two algorithms and remember this thing every vertex should be connected and it follow a minimum span spanning tree property okay so this is what a prism algorithm and a crucial algorithm is prism algorithm you have to understand you have to write the previ the every possibility from a to b the weight is 3 a to h the weight is 6 if in case the weight is 16 you cannot choose this part you cannot if the weight is like 16 you cannot choose this part if the weight is 15 like let's say an example here is 16 here is 15 okay now from a to b you choose now you if you want to do if you want to cover another path then you cannot do you cannot choose this path because the weight is 16 you cannot choose this path because weight is 15 now in these three which is minimum the minimum is this one a to h so you definitely connect this path okay this is what a prism algorithm is so i hope it is clear to you that what is a prism algorithm okay so this is all about the minimum spanning three concept in this video thank you for watching this video like the video and subscribe my channel